Good morning, dear students. From today, we are going to begin with a new chapter: cell structure and function. In our junior classes, mostly in class six, we have studied about variety of living organisms, and we know that they have different types of body structure. They have different feeding habits, different type of movement, and so on. But still, there are some common characteristics of living organisms. These characteristics differentiate them from the non-living things. Some of those characteristics are written over here. Living organisms they breathe, they take in oxygen to release energy from the food. They need food. Without food, living organisms cannot survive. So, feeding is one of the important characteristics of living organisms similarly most of the living organisms they show movement living organisms grow and they have a definite life span that means they die after some time maybe few years in some cases it might be a few months or weeks also that means their life span is definite But the most important characteristic is they are made up of cells. Other characteristics which I have not written may be here they reproduce and other things are also there. But I want to focus on this. Living organisms are made up of cells. They have a cellular organization. Maybe they have one cell or more cells or many cells. They are all made up of cells. So today we will study about cell. We will get an introduction about the cell. Cell is a basic unit of life. Basic structural and functional unit of life. All living organisms are made up of cells. So we can say that like a wall is made up of bricks. Okay, many bricks. Come together to make a wall. So we can say that a brick is a unit of the wall, basic unit of the wall. It is as wall is made up of bricks. Similarly, living beings are made up of cells. So cell is the basic structural and functional unit of living organisms. The cell was first observed by Robert Hooke in sixteen sixty five. He observed. Cell in dead cork cells. Dead cork tissue. We took a slice from it and observed under a primitive type of microscope. At that time, modern microscopes were not there. In which he observed structure like honeycomb. This kind of structure he saw. Honeycomb-like structure was observed, and these were like small enclosed structures. cells that is why the name was given to it the size of a cell ranges from few micrometers to few centimeters some of the cells may be big enough you can see them with naked eyes but most of the cells are microscopic you cannot see them with naked eyes for that purpose we need microscope nowadays microscopes are of different type in the time of uh, robert hooke the microscope was very uh, primitive type it was not able to give so much of magnification but nowadays we have different types of microscopes for you right now i am having compound microscope which we use in the school this is a compound microscope here you can see the eye piece through which here a lens is there Through which we observe, like this way. Okay. Then we have object lens of different focal length. We can change. This is the stage. Stage is the place where we keep the slide to observe the specimen. If we want to observe the cells in onion, so we we'll take a slice of onion and put it on a slide and place it on the stage. That piece of onion is called the specimen. The 
object which we want to observe under a microscope that is called a specimen this is a handle here you have a mirror mirror reflects the light so that you can see but here we have electric arrangement also through this we can switch on the light a light is there over here we can connect to the socket and switch on the light to observe the specimen this side you can see two knobs this is coarse adjustment knob and this is fine adjustment knob we can bring it up and down to see the specimen clearly to focus it clearly okay so this is compound microscope although in the to observe the different parts of the cell we are using a uh, electron microscope which is not available everywhere in the schools we uh, mostly use simple microscope and compound microscope so those cells which are very small which cannot be observed by naked eyes can be observed under microscope so microscope is used to observe the cells cell theory was proposed by three scientists theodor schall mathias schedel and verhoeven they said that all living organisms are made up of cells and cells can only be obtained from pre existing cells pre existing means which are already there so from the older cells only we get the newer cells okay now based on the number of cells organisms can be classified into two categories whether they have one cell or they have many cell based on that they are classified into two categories unicellular and multicellular uni means one so those organisms whose body is made up of only one cell they are known as unicellular organisms like last year we have studied about amoeba amoeba is a unicellular organism then multicellular multi means many those organisms which have many cells in their body whose body structure is made up of many cells they are known as multicellular organisms human beings are a very good example of multicellular organisms we have trillions of cells in our body now based on uh, whether the nucleus is uh well developed or not that also differentiates the organisms into two categories prokaryotic and eukaryotic those organisms in which the cell has a well developed nucleus with a double layered wall that organism is called eukaryotic and the primitive organisms like bacteria they do not have a nucleus enclosed in a wall that we will be studying later cells they differ in shape also now why do cells have different shape in multicellular organisms different cells perform different functions and their location is also different some of them like for example in human being some of them are found on the skin some are there in the muscles some are uh, transferring the message in the nervous system so based on this their shape is different to facilitate the function and to adapt to the location their shape is different here this is muscle cell muscle cell is spindle shape okay this one is muscle cell spindle shape you can see it is thick in the middle and tapering at both the ends whereas neuron this is nerve cell human nerve cell human nerve cell they are the longest right and they have to uh, transfer the message they have to carry the impulses from end one end to another so they have a long structure like this this is these are dendrites 
and this is axon. Okay, and this is cell body. Here you have the nucleus. Nucleus actually is the brain of the cell. It controls all the activities of the cell. So based on the function and location, cells have different shapes. Now in multicellular organism, we have a particular type of organization of the cells. Cells of same type, doing same function, having same origin, they form a tissue. Okay, tissue is a group of cells which have same origin, similar function. Okay, like muscle tissue, bony tissue. Okay, these are tissues. Now the tissues they combine to form organs. Like for example, stomach is an organ. Intestine is an organ. Heart is an organ. So they are made up of different types of tissues. Then different types of organs they combine to form an organ system. In a complex multicellular organism, you have organ systems. Like in human beings, we have digestive system, nervous system, circulatory system, reproductive system, muscular system, skeletal system, etc. So these they have different organs which come together to perform the functions. Like in digestive system, you have stomach, you have intest small intestine, large intestine. They assist in the digestion and absorption process. And all these systems come together to form an organism. So human being is an organism. Right? We have different types of organ systems which coordinate together to carry out all the functions. Whereas in unicellular organisms that one single cell performs all the functions. There that one single cell is the organism itself. Whereas in multicellular organisms different cells they form tissues, organs, organ systems and then organism. Lastly, let us see some of the important uh, cells. The smallest cell is the cell of bacteria. Bacterial cells are the smallest cells. Largest animal cell is an ostrich egg. Ostrich egg is quite large. In the deserts of Africa, people store water in ostrich egg shell. Then, largest plant cell is the cycus ovule. Cycus is the coniferous tree in which flowers are not there. Seeds are produced, naked seeds are produced. So that ovule, ovule is the female uh, reproductive structure of the cycus. So that is the largest cell in the, among the plants. And longest human cell as we have already discussed is the nerve cell. Nerve cell is quite long, a few uh, and starting from the brain till reaching different organs, so it has a long structure. Children, you might be thinking that always we can see the cells under microscope only, but it is not so. If you have seen an egg of a hen, that is also one single cell. Right? Eggs of the birds and the reptiles, they are one single cell. So, I hope with this video, you must have got a general idea about what is cell, how it was discovered and some of the important points related to the cell. Please read the chapter and in case of any doubt, do feel free to contact me. Thank you so much.